Okay, so now we're back working on our package design, and one of the important elements is the Lakeview Farm logo. Now, very often you will be asked to do draw a logo, or um, the customer doesn't have a copy of the logo, or they'll give you a little piece of paper with the logo on it, and it's not good enough for reproduction. So you'll have to redraw the logo. It's always easier to redraw a logo than it is to try and fix up a bad reproduction. So let's go to File and Place. And let's place the scan of the Lake View Farm logo. Here we go. There it is. And, and actually, we can, uh, oh, we can just leave it like that. And I'm going to secure that onto a layer. And I'll double click and put down template on here. Remember, we did that before. And I'm going to lock it. There we go. So now we can draw on that. And let's make a new layer. And we'll call this drawing. OK. So now we're set. We're working on a new layer. And let's begin. The best thing to remember is that um, we need to do this in spot colors or PMS colors. And if you look at the sheet that you were given, you will see that there are um, Pantone 485, Process White, Process Yellow, and process blue uh, for this. And so we're going to get these colors now and um, Pantone 354. So let's come to our swatches. If you don't have your swatches open already, um, go ahead and let's go to this little rectangle on the side here and say open swatch library and come to color books. And let's go to Pantone Coded. Okay. And here's our number. And actually, we can find a number by just putting in uh, 485. And oh, it wants to put in a 1 there. And we don't want that 1. OK, where is And there's the red we need. Um, so what we're going to do is create a color group here. And we're going to call this Lakeview Farm logo. There we are. All right. And we'll take this red and put it in there. OK. And you know that this is a Pantone color because of the little triangle with the dot in the lower right hand corner. OK, the next one we need is Pantone. Let's see. Let me get this here. All right, well, I'll just go through this. And delete. Oh, well, we do need Pantone um, process yellow, so uh, Let's, let's see if we can say process yellow. It doesn't let us. OK. OK, there's our yellow. So we will pull that over here. OK. And the next one is a um, Pantone. The number is 354, which is a green. And there it is. OK, very good. Getting everything in line like we need it. And the last one will be process blue. And there's our process blue here. And we'll drag that. Here. And we'll need a white in here also. And we'll drag that in. Okay. 
So there's our color palette. We can now close the Pantone and continue working. So now you have to analyze your logo here. And I can see that this is part of a circle. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my ellipse tool. Excuse me, that keeps popping up. And I'll go to my ellipse tool here. And I will create a centered circle. And I'm going to do it to the white outline. And there's a reason for that. And I'll take off my fill and do this. I'm going to do this work here. There we go. I'm going to move up there. Now, we have to remember that this is a Xerox copy. I'm just going to drag that in ever so slightly here on each end. I'm holding down my shift key to keep the integrity of the circle. OK, and there we go. That's good. All right, that's very good. OK, so we've got that. <clears throat> and that's pretty darn close. And what I'm going to do now is take the circle and make a rectangle over the bottom half of it, like this. And I'm just going to move that up just a slight amount, because there, it should be around there. So now I'm going to go to Outline and View. So now I have my circle, and I have my rectangle. And I'm going to choose the rectangle and the circle and go to my Pathfinder and say minus front. And there I have my very nice shape that I need. OK, so I'm not going to put any of the color in until I've drawn all of this. So um, what I will do now is uh, go to Object and Pathfinder and Offset Path, because I, I want to do the object that's on the outside. And I'm going to do this two points, because I've done this logo quite a few times, and I know that it's two points. It's Offset two points. So you can see I just drew the white part. And then I did the offset to draw the red part. OK. So I'm going to go to the white part. And I'm going to make a guide for myself that will help me to draw. So I'm going to go to make an object first. So I'll go to Object and Path and Offset Path, and I'm going to do this minus two points, because I want this inward. There we go. So that's where I want my guide to be. And I'm going to select that now and go to View, Guide, and Make Guides. OK, so now I've got a nice guide to work with there uh, when I do my drawing. So I have now my guide. And I'm going to start drawing this area here. So I'll go with the pen tool. And you notice I have no fill or no stroke at this point. So I'm going to start in the middle here and just drag out. I'm going to come down to my guide. Ah, that's good. And hold down my Alt key and, and make a, whoops, I have to hold my Alt key here. And I'm just going to click on that anchor point. 
and I'll make a point here to this guide and hold down my shift key to keep my line straight and come up here to this guide here and do you see how I'm using my guide to draw and I'll just go like this okay so now I have the little light and it's annoying me to have on the smart guide, so I'm going to turn that off right now. Okay, so now um, I've got the lake. Now I'm going to do the grass. So I'll come here, and I'm again, I'm using the guide. I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see. I'm using the guide to draw with. So I'll come here and just make a, a light curved line. There we go. And I'm going to hold down my Alt key here and here. I'm going to hold my Shift key down to keep it perfectly straight. There we go. It's a little bit down and it probably could go up a little bit and I'll change that when I do my drawing. Hold my Alt key here because I'm making a pretty strong change of direction. There we go. All right. Oops. All right. And here, instead of coming to this point here, I'm coming here to where my guide says I should go. And again, I'll change my anchor point by holding down my Alt key there. Draw this, bring it up. Very nice. And again, when I come to this anchor point here to close, I will hold down my Alt key. There we go. Nice. Now I'll change my view just to see how this is looking. Well, it certainly does look like. Um, this could be fixed up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is go with the direct selection tool here and bring down my anchor point and I'm using my arrow keys and I put my nudge at um, point two point. And that's pretty small amount. Okay. And here, just come up just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to move this anchor point here just down a little bit because it's supposed to be two inches and two points difference in between. And that's more than two points. So I'm going to bring that down here. And here too on this side. All right. And I will just move that ever so slightly. There we go. And on this side also, just to the left. Very good. OK, so now that looks pretty good. So I'll go back and start on the rest of my units. So I will go, <laughs> go to the pen tool and, and go and change to the preview view. OK, so now I have my lake and I have my um, house here. All right, so now what I want to do is make the sky, the sun, and the barn. All right, so I'm going to stop the video now, and I'm going to pick up on the next video making those other elements.